Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about practical use of a machine learning approach, neural network, artificial neural network, and the use of it in material or mechanical engineering fields. What I want to do is to give you a very basic introduction of how can you use this tool for your engineering problems and how can you start learning the approach. There are many YouTube videos, many courses online that you can take to be more familiar with the concept, but today I want to just talk about the basics. In the first part of this video, I want to talk about the basics of neural network. I want to give you an overview of how I use artificial neural networks in two of my manuscripts. In the second part of this tutorial, I want to talk about how you can import data from a text file, reorganize it to be used in neural network toolbox of MATLAB, and then I want to give you a very basic overview of NN tool, which is neural network toolbox of MATLAB, and it's a graphical user interface just to start working with it. We will do a training and validation of neural network will compare the results that the neural network generates with the experimental values we fed the network and also we'll talk about the importance of normalizing the data and also the structure of neural network. So what are these neural networks? Neural networks are computational logical structures designed based on a natural process. Basically after our brain or any animal's brain was evolved. What do I mean by that? When we were a child and we were shown a yellow circle, we were told that this shape is circle and this color is yellow. And we were told it repeatedly till the point that we understand that that shape is circle and that color is yellow. From that point forward, whenever we are seeing a yellow circle, we immediately realize that that is a yellow circle. We do the same thing in case of neural network. We design a structure, which is the brain. We design and decide how big it should be, how many neurons it should have, how complex the structure is supposed to be, how many hidden layers it's going to have, what sort of functions do we need in each hidden layer, and also, most importantly, what sort of information we want to feed the network as the inputs, and what sort of information we want to get out of the network or the outputs of this neural network. I'm mainly focusing on the feed-forward backpropagation neural networks that is extensively used in engineering. In case of neural networks, the data is used to form the model. This is in comparison with some sort of hardening functions that we use for material, for example, or rheological equations that we assume that this material is going to follow. And basically, it is different with the predefined mathematical equations. We assume that the model should follow. The use of neural network consists of three different stages. The initiation stage, training stage, and validation stage. What do I mean by each of them? In the initiation phase, we decide on the shape, size, type of the neural network. For example, we say we want to use a feed-forward backpropagation neural network, and that's the one that is commonly used in engineering studies. We want the network to have this number of layers, this number of hidden layers, and we want it to have this number of neurons. Basically, we are deciding on how complex the structure of the brain or how big the structure of the brain is supposed to be. Most importantly, we are deciding on what sort of inputs do we want to give to the network, what sort of things we want the network to receive, and what sort of information the network is supposed to produce for us, what sort of outcomes we are expecting from the network. And then we are going to give this structure of the network a set of data that we experimentally obtained or we obtained somehow and we are sure about those data and we try to train the network. In the training step, we give the neural network the values that we experimentally obtained. We give the network the information for the inputs and we also show the network what should be the outputs. 
And during the process of the training, weights and biases inside the layers are going to be calculated to minimize the errors of this network. And in the validation stage, we are going to validate the network to see if it can predict the values from the information that it has not been shown before. So we show or we give the network some values that it has not been seen before and we try to see what is the outcome of the network and if the outcome of the network are close to the actual outcome or experimental outcome, that network is validated. As you have already known, this concept is extensively used in different industries like for example, the face recognition in your cell phone, speech recognition, or sleep analysis, and in the case of our tutorial, most importantly in engineering fields. Now I want to share with you two of my manuscripts that I use neural network to kind of give you a glimpse of how I use them and how you can use them. Your industry or your field of use might be completely different, but I hope that this gives you a very basic rough idea how you can use this network. In one of my paper, which was the use of artificial neural network to predict hot deformation behavior of 7075 aluminum alloy at low strain rates, I assume that this network that I want to use is going to receive temperature, strain rate, and a strain. The inputs of the network is these three values and the outcome of it is supposed to be the stress. So I assume that my network is going to have three inputs and one output. Also, I wanted to have one hidden layer, which was a TANSIC layer, uh, and the other one was the output layer, layer which was pure lin or pure linear um, output layer. And the training that I used was Levenberg Marquardt training algorithm. Again, this is one of the most commonly used training algorithm for engineering studies. In many of the neural network papers, manuscripts, and studies, you see this kind of square shaped figure, which shows you how good the network was to predict the values in comparison with the experimental values. In this figure, you see true stress values in the horizontal axis, and in the vertical one, you see the true stress values predicted by neural network. In the ideal situation, if the network was the perfect, the most perfect network, every data should lie on the diagonal of this plot. So each data point is supposed to match exactly with its experimental data point. And you can see that in this case, the prediction was reasonable and we had a good R value, the mean square error was low, and the data lies on almost on the diagonal of this square. Another thing that I want to share with you is that in order to obtain these good results, I had to use temperature, strain rates, and a strain in somewhat physically meaningful relationship with each other. For example, in case of temperature, I used 1 divided by the temperature and I used the Kelvin unit for my temperature. In case of strain rate, I used the natural logarithmic of the strain rate and the strain was okay. Also, I had to use normalized stress as my stress values. In the second part of this tutorial, I'll show you why that is important and how normalizing and giving some sort of physical meaningful thing will help the network to predict better, especially if you don't have a very complex structure for your network. In the second paper that I published somehow based on neural network, we tried to use neural network to predict rate-dependent tensile flow behavior of 5182 aluminum alloys. I used two different structures for neural network. One of them had two layers, the other one had three layers. And I had the inputs as the direction, logarithmic of the strain rate and a strain. And the output was the stress or logarithmic of the stress. I had different number of neurons in each network and I trained them to different numbers 
and also I used different training algorithms. Levenberg mark for was for NN1 and Bayesian regulation was for number two. And you can see in this plot that the experimental true stress was very close to the predicted one or vice versa. Especially in case of NN2, the prediction was significantly more accurate than NN1. But that NN2 had more neurons and more hidden layer inside and the calculation was a little bit uh, more complex because the, the input had to be normalized and some natural logarithmic had to be calculated and then I was able to get these outcomes. What I did next was to use this NN1 and NN2 as the hardening properties for my abacus simulation. So I used abacus viewmat to be able to give the material the properties, the mechanical properties based on these neural networks. So I didn't use like Johnson Cook or power law equation or a table, but the value of the strain um, and also stress was calculated in the view mat using NN1 and NN2. And you can see that even the comparison between the NN1 and NN2 was reasonable, but NN2 was able to give me a better and more accurate results when I compared them with the actual um, experimental value. So NN2 was able to predict the onset of, say, for example, necking in my tensile specimen more accurately. It was giving me the effective strain values more closely to what the experimental was showing me. So that's all for part one. In part two, I want to show you a very brief overview of how you can use feed-forward backpropagation neural network in MATLAB's environment. Thank you.